To introduce our first guest, uh, as long as I've been covering the cable industry, we've defined everything in terms of households, right? Uh, video penetration by household, even ARPU, or average revenue per unit, is a household reference. Um, that's changing with the help of this first instigator. Please join me in welcoming the president of CSG International's Content Direct Unit, Kent Steffen. Kent. Welcome to Imagine Park. Welcome to the couch. Thanks, Stuart. <laughs> Glad to have you here, sir. All right, let me get rid of this pillow. So what do you got, what's, what's going on? You're, you're personalizing a business that's always been sort of, as I said, uh, talked about on a household basis. Yeah, so, so uh, I'm, my name is Kent Steffen and I'm with CSG. We do a lot of the back office systems for the service providers and the group that I'm with is actually working on a lot of content monetization platforms for service providers, content providers like the studios, sports networks. And we're here to talk today about really kind of the transformation that's going on. There's a lot of market forces that are driving things. There's a lot of IT things that are driving. And so really want to talk about some of those and then we'll, we'll do some demonstrations of some of the new services that are, that are coming around. Let's do it. All right, so when, when we look at the, the service provider space, there's really kind of three main things that are driving right now a lot of disruption. There, um, there is, in the good old days, there were service providers that basically had network that would go to all of our houses, and there was retailers that would sell shiny discs, and that was a lot of what entertainment was about. Device manufacturers were basically suppliers to these guys, and a couple years back, the fruit company in California decided they were going to go do a lot of um, getting their own content and getting their own their own movies, their own music, and, and games and apps, and, and obviously Apple's had a a great run at, at making devices. The and fruit company, I get it. Now. Yeah, okay, okay, go ahead, move on. <laughs> so it left a lot of the other device manufacturers kind of figuring out what's their ecosystem play for direct to consumer because content is selling devices. At the same time, kind of the, the studios are starting to um, get involved. The sports networks have done a pretty good job, MLB and, and um, guys like the NBA at going direct to consumer, kind of working with the service providers on certain ways that they package their content but also doing direct-to-consumer types of offerings. Uh, we're also seeing the studios these days. There's a new uh, infrastructure rolling out called Ultraviolet, which is kind of the, right. the locker in the cloud. And so they're doing a lot of direct-to-consumer types of, of things where they're, they're touching the customers directly. You also have the retailers. They're getting their own video platforms together and kind of the Walmarts of the world and the Best Buys of the world are doing a lot of direct-to-consumer offerings. A lot of the um, folks that were creating devices are now creating these ecosystems of ways to develop. So we just saw the hackathon. A lot of new apps are coming into play and they're actually kind of the next generation of these services. And so people like Google and, and Xbox are starting to build platforms that people can innovate very quickly as they create these services. So it's not the network engineers that are creating the services anymore, but now it's, it's a whole series of, of app developers that are adding value. We also see the over-the-top players, the typical Netflix and, and Hulu and Blockbuster and folks like that. So very quickly, the value chain from we had a bunch of suppliers through the distribution channels has evolved and you really have direct-to-consumer relationships that are, consumers have a lot of choice now. Right. They can do things with uh, their content, they can do things with their devices, they can get access in a lot of different ways. And it really becomes a battle for their wallet and their attention span. It's still only 24 hours in a day, but lots of suppliers now. The other thing that's kind of interesting, especially in the, in the MSO space, is really this, this whole thing of what we call the identity crisis, which most of the world of cable is driven around a household. And it's driven around Nirvana is if I can get a triple play sold to a specific house, voice, video, and data. And, and then I'm kind of maximizing my revenue. And all the IT systems really track homes and they track uh, billing accounts and they track network devices that are installed. But we as consumers are, are very different than that now. We've got obviously a lot of choices like we saw in the, in the last slide, but it's not so much a household, but now it's all the people within that household that have very different profiles. Well, individuals, on, damn it. Exactly, yeah. on, how, on how they um, consume their content. So you know, if you look at a couple Typical, typical profiles, you got dear old dad, busy guy, works a lot, loves his, his weekend sports, he's got TVs in every room, including above the barbecue, he likes 3D. You know, a lot, of, a lot of what he does is a combination of kind of TV watching and web to catch up on sports highlights. He's got a daily commute, he likes to take his content to go. Uh, when he's home, video conferencing is an important part. So you're starting to see a lot of these services are really starting to drive over a data pipe. 
whether they're video or whether they're voice or whether they're typically data. Mom, she's trying to keep the family all together. She's got lots to do. She's, most of her TV is consumed through the DVR because she doesn't have time to be there when the linear channels are going on. She uses social networking to keep in touch with all the people from school and all of her friends and, and all those types of things. Follow me phone services is important. It'll be great. She saw at the auto show. She can do catch up TV in the car pretty soon. So when she's waiting in line to pick up the kids, she can catch up on some things. And, and texting is really a way that she keeps the whole family in line with where, where folks are going. The kids, you know, they're all about kind of on the move and, and on the go. Uh, brother Bart, he's a cloud gamer guy. He used to own just the little council. Now everything's in the cloud, so he can do social, which is really driving a lot of, of bandwidth consumption and things like that, which is great for the data pipe providers. But it also means that you have to, to market to these guys a little bit differently. And so video consumption for him is all about long tail and extreme sports, and usually on an iPad or, or some kind of device. When he watches TV, that's cool, but he's always got a second, either a mobile phone or a, a tablet in hand, so keep up on his fantasy league and figure out exactly what's happening when, when the real-time things are happening on the TV, what's, what's happening in his world is really driven by that second screen. And Sister Susie, she's all about the social network side of it and always on the go, always needs to be connected. Video chat, the only time she watches TV shows is when she catches up on Hulu. And so it's really a, a disparate set of profiles. So, wanted to, to turn it over to Ryan real quick and just kind of look at a couple of these scenarios. Obviously, there's a huge change that's happening from what used to be conditional access at a set-top box is now moving into the cloud with digital lockers. And so, no matter what the device, you want to make sure that your content is going to be on the device, whether it's connected to the internet or whether it's a download scenario. And then take a look at just kind of some of the cloud gaming types of services we're supporting these days from some, some pretty innovative providers. So, so in this case, what you're seeing here is, uh, as per Ken's slide, dear old dad, having access to uh, a web presence uh, past the, the traditional uh, methods of accessing video across the network, being able to access a digital library that it, uh, includes all of his entitlements that he has access to. From here, being able to take all of those entitlements and when he goes and, and is on the move, being able to take an additional device such as uh, an iPhone. We're going to do something to the iPhone real quick. There we go. <laughs> being able to pick up something like an iPhone and being able to gain those same uh, those same entitlements and being able to download uh, the the movie and and be on the move. So one consolidated uh, cloud of entitlements for the the user to be able to access. <clears throat> And so in that demonstration, you really transition from entitlements on a set-top box really into the cloud. When I'm at home, I can stream it through a series of devices. When I'm on the go, I can download it to those devices and take the ones that I want to be able to catch up where I may not have 3G or 4G um, types of connectivity. And so, Kent, no one's ever accused me of being a, a math specialist, but you get a sense of this, this the exponential scale that you're introducing here is kind of mind-boggling, right? Yeah, it's, it's interesting because it was kind of the network controls everything, and now basically the devices are getting quite a bit smarter. And they're checking in with the network to see what they can have from an entitlements perspective. And there are but a lot of them, yeah. It, cha it changes the, the complexity substantially. And then finally, the ability to, to be able to go out and extend services to things uh, like to Brother Bart to be able to go in and, and navigate and play uh, video games uh, across more than just a console, but actually doing it off of something like a tablet, uh, such as an Android or an iPad uh, type tablet. So very cool infrastructure. We're supporting a company called OnLive, does cloud gaming. Everything's happening back in the data center, and basically it's just bringing video back to the devices as people are playing. So really low, low latency, high bandwidth types of, of pipes that are driving kind of this next generation but it really allows you to put social aspects into the games and into the whole consumption model, which is, which is really transforming kind of council gaming and PC gaming and then the handheld world. And the touch interfaces are so great on tablets that it gives you so much yeah. more control in gaming, which is, which is pretty neat. So a couple examples, obviously quite a, quite a bit going on in the, in the service definition. Can we shoot to, to back to the slides? So another thing that's really happening, and, and we're seeing it obviously with, with quite a few of the, 
the big companies. This is whole the world from the cloud where where our content is is out in the cloud and going to our devices. You look at folks like Google that started out as a search engine. You know they now have 250 million um, Android devices that are registered in their ecosystem. So they're starting to drive search. They're tra starting to drive operating systems where they can embed themselves into new services, location-based services, couponing. Amazon started out as a bookstore. Now they're pushing all kinds of services over their own devices with the Kindle. They're pushing cloud services and being able to offer that. Facebook's doing pretty good with about 845 million subscribers pretty where good. people are spending quite a bit of time. And Apple's done a pretty good job on their devices. So the scale that these guys are doing and the way that they define services is very granular. It's these apps and these, these ways that are a little bit different than network-centric, which is really their world is services are moving from network-based to very personalized ways that we can communicate with our friends, that we can get entertained and communicate. The next-gen set of services are both a blend of on-net and off-net types of services. Very easy to personalize, very easy to use. If, if mom has to spend more than two minutes, she ain't using it. So, you know, the services are getting, are getting pretty personalized. And it's all about kind of being, selling those to the people and their personalization, not necessarily the home. So, you know, the bottom line with the services is the content and services are going to follow the users. Mm -hmm. Whatever screen they're in front of, whatever device they're on, not the other way around. It won't be, very soon we won't have these challenges of, of where can I get my content? It's just, it's going to be ubiquitous out in the cloud. So that's causing a lot of transformation for service providers, for content providers, for licensing deals, for IT systems. And it, it's obviously an exciting time for consumers right now. It's, uh, it, and it's obviously influenced the way you guys think about the business and even, even organized your company. You have a plane to catch. We have three other panelists. All right. Kent and Ryan, thanks for being thanks with us today. Thanks a lot. Today. Thanks, Dirk. Yeah. Thank you.